Yeah, I don't know that I told you 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 that I La sunga le tai tai le sauninga ta fa ese fa feilo ia tu fo e le fa to no le UNESCO to no se tai mita to poto poto manisi fo yo su yo malo sa va la wi no le nei tai au le pa io le au va la au lia ai mai se alo ma fa na wa onga wa ta to ma fu ta fa ta si au le so ma le fa mo e mo e wa no fu fa le ai ma fi na alo le au tu o le ta pe nanga Alam tanga alwenga o taalonga. A onga taalonga maanga nuu. Ae maise wana paanga. Ile faa wa wina ole nei por kalame. E peyo na faa mana tuina faa tasi. Male la nulangi ya toa. La usunga ta faa ese tautu. Director of UNESCO. Members of the diplomatic corps. Representatives from various government ministries and public entities. Distinguished guests teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it, give, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you today at this very important occasion, the celebration and the commemoration of the International Archives Day 2021. Your presence today attests to your continued passion and dedication to the life of, to the safeguarding, safekeeping, prolonging the life of archives. We thank you, we thank our own government for supporting this intervention, which has brought all of us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for your participation and be part of this occasion. So, se fai ngā mea lava lea tunu, tā tū te a mata lava i mata upu, i mata upu sā. O leo te wala wa tuai ma le faalo alo le sai tai ule sa ninga i le nei tai au. Molata <laughs> I have a little bit of 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 a little
Faftai mole vi inga. Ya bo ma fai fo er na vi inga mare na pese ona mo moli mali nga ngor ni cha ya. Wa upu ma sani ala tu nu u e ma fai er pese ona la u. Ai le ma fai le la u ona pese. O upu er pese ni cha ya. Teu teu ru lo tu mativa. Ya fa pe na fo si fa ma na tu ni va ya ngor cha ya. Po ame u ma ta tu te fai ya o ame ta tu te mo mo ya. Au no ma le lo tu ya. Le le ma fai ona tu nu. Ole va va ya tu ile fi mo le nei taia. E fori nga mai o se vala au lia. Ale a kai mo tanto. Ole nga tala ya te otor fa nao. Ma ta nga rue nga ese ese wa ya. Ae ma se ole au fai nga rue nga ma ta nga rue nga au nga ta alo nga ma nga nu. Ae o te fia fa nga ina le vala au lia fa ale a yesu le na vala au wa yon so. Le na vala au wa tu ya si mona pe te ru man te le. Ile ma ta au fu. E fa ole tu si amante io lo non fai uposu mali le lo fai ta uina e fa pia ona fe ta la iatu le a o ia ia te la ua ina mul mul mai e ia te o te fai a o rua ma fai fai vai tangat o ma fau fau a ne ta a ma ufesili fau a ia te ulo ai se ana ma na o mia ia fa a ola e ta una i ni onso Aur fa ola fo ile ise si siria tu wa le alo le tu so ifu. Ina u uma na vala audia so on fa u lo le fa ola. Ma tu tu le tala ya tu tala le. Ole me na sa ma na mi ya ir fa ola on so. Ina ye yai ni se lang ola ngon su ai ngar ru ng. Tala ing ngar tala le yo sa mo. E u ya si le fi ir fa ola ile ise si siria tu na ilo ya. Ai sa ia mana o mia nisi. E la tu te nga lu lue fa atasi. E ta ala. Ma fai le fai va. E pe yo na fina nga lu ye lu tan tu ta ma o le la. O na uto e fesili fo ile ili tas fesili. Ile vala au lia la vala al fa ola. Ai se a na vala au lia yel fa ola le au fai fai va. Ai sa ta una vala au lia ni fai ya o. O ni tangata e a o au ina tangata. A wa le fai fai wa. E ese lo na to mai mo lo na nga wa. E ese ma ilan to wa o win tanga te pe yo fai ya on. Ya. Ma fa u fai wa ne la wa o ele au tu wa u mon tu ina tu po klam me ne yas. Ay o mea ye sa o ma na tu ye. Sa ta ma fai le fai wa. E fa a o fi a tanga te u mo ne nga lo wa. Ma lana au o na. Fa pe na u ma le. Ma natu mal fina nga lo tatu vaya ngole akaibis. Ina ia fa au fia i tatu. Ile au au ina mal fa mau popo ina o fa mau mau. Ma te u malu. Au wale anga ilu mai peo na ia. Ele i ma fa u fa uli fa au la ni to mai. Sa ile au fai fai. Au wa ele ta ua ia te ia ia meo. Ele ta ua il fa au la to mai ma nga va. Ai ole me pito sili ona ta uol fa ola. O fa ti nonga. O au au nanga. Ma le au wala e ta u lima ina il tangata. Lo na wala au lia pe a faya e fa ma tu otu ya. O upu ma sani ale atu. O le tele o lima e ma ma isi a venga. O le ngalu lue fa atasi e ta u nu o isi fa moe moe. O le fa moe moe nga na ole asone. Ele ngata ina fa amna tuina. Ae ole wala au lia le na. Ale tatu vae nga le na ro. O mai. O mai tatu nga lu lue fa atasi. Ma o tatu utau ma fai le me ngata ilo tatu ma fai. Ina e ma fai una tu fa atasi ma teu malu fa mao mao. Ele ngata ina ta ua ima ta nga lue nga le ma alo. E ta ua ili atu nu. Ae ta ua fu imo tatu ma o tatu vae. Ile e kale siya iskrusi ala upa iyo aso yunga ta. E ila to por kalame ta uor fa peotania. O le family history. Po le tala fa sol pito a inga. Ile na por kalame. Uwa te u malu umma e lava fa uma umonga. Ma tala anga. O a inga ta itasi. Ina iya fa inga ufia na fitu fa. Ma tu ina atu itu pula nga lalwa o alo fa ima. E ala fa iu se fa uma tala nga nene iya aso. 
Il est assis là où poussi à tanga ta Afrique. Si li la vont au fi fi. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go together. Ol fa mana tu na muta tu ni yesu. Tato va eng ole akais. Au tato mana o tato te va lu sao sao. Na malanga ale na oto. Ai au to fi na ngalo e tato te malanga ise me mama o au sie se me mama o tato fa mo mo. No tato malanga fa ta si umale. Olo na wi. E mana o miail au au nanga matanga lu nga te tas. E mana o miail au au nanga lu matanga lu nga wa o nga ta lu nga ma no. E mana o miail fo ile au au nanga e kalesi. Ma so se tasi la. E fi tu ina mailo na tawa. E lango lango ne nga lu. Le ya se 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 ngol fa mana tu le ne ya so. Ma fa mana tu fo i ta to matanga lu. Au ta to le nga lu lu e fa tasi. E le ta nu o ta to fa mo nga. E le tini la ta to fa i ma ma. E pe yo no ta to fa mo mo. Fa mo nu ya mele tu o ne ya so. I le fa mo mo e pe on fa mo na tu e. Ai ma se lu ta to ta mo fa ye. I na ye fa mo po po. Ma te o ma lu fa mo mo. Awale lumana. Na u te talo e fai unai tatu seo nina le taya. Lo mato u te maa pele o lo afio le lang. O mato u te fo yatu nei vaya ngol taya o ma le nganga fa mo walalo. Ma le fa nga e tia o no awano le lewa e seo nia mo e mato. Le ne u mato u ma wane taya o fo u fa popo yaso lo la to so i fua. Ai ma se o so mato u wo la fanta uwa. O mato u fa aftai te maa o no awano le lewa e seo nia. Mo i mato. Mato te fei loa i ae mo mato mo li mawina ne ya so fa pitoa. E pe yon fo fo ina mo fa tu langa ina ili lalo langa. Mato fa aftai ta ma ila upui pui nga ma lao tau singa. O au fa manu yanga yo mato ta ita i fa an mata nga luenga. O ta ita i a onga. I ae mai se fo i o fa la poputonga ma mata nga luenga ta itasi. O ma fai o no mato i ae li ne ita yao. Mato fa aftai ta ma i au me alo fa lilo. O fa pe nao na e fa mune i nai tanga ta te to tasi. Ae mai se o i mātou, malo mātou ngā lulu e i lalo i whona nei whane. Mātou fa aftai ta mā mō mea uma. Ma mea alo fa whale a ngānga o fa pe nao na e fa manu ia. Ma tu ina mai mō no mātou so i whua, mō no mātou wola. Ao mātou e i nei lalo langi nei tū mai. Mātou te tālo ta mā nei vaya ngā le aso. I ae au fa manu ia ngai o mātou te ita. Ma tā ngā lue ngā ese ese a i le ngata i lea. O fa ala pol potonga. O fa pe nao no mātou e i fa tasi. Fa manui a i ulu a onga. O fa i a onga. A e mai se o alo ma fa nao. O fa pe nao no mātou e i fa tasi. Se o mātou mo li mau wina. Fa ti nonga ma ngārua nga e pe ona i ai. Mātou te tālo ta mā. Fuo fuo nga uma mpo kalamil nei asu. Fa pe nao no tātou au malau fio. I ne mi fa ona manui a mea uma mātou te fai a. Mātou te tālo fo. I ni se o lo ta mu fai mai le ala. Malu tie o au lofa i nei mi whanao mātou whi loa i rifia whia man manu ia te maa. Mātou te tālo nei vaya ngale aso wha manu ia i lātou. O lo ngā lulu e nei yu nite po le nei vaya. E nei mo whai no tau nu o lātou wha mo e mo e nga mo lu manai. O lo mātou te tālo le ta maa. I ei nise o wha manu ia ngā wa e si le whia. E anga waa ma tala whia ngai mo e mātou. I a wha pe nao nei fua ia tūse o lau maa sani. Mātou te tālo mo ni mātou alo lofa tēle ia te o te maa. Ea la tu sua falo wa le pele o Yesu ke visu. Amen. Ea fa ma wina le nga ngal faftai le nei tai au. La u su ngal tai tai ul saam ni nga mo le upu fola fola. Fo i ma upu fa la ei au. Wa tu o mata wina ai o ma te utangata. Fa au penga ina ayo mātou tanga ta tai tō atasi. Ia mo le anga ilungo le tātou fai ngā malanga. O la mātou te tālo e le aise manuia o yate i mātou. A wana o le atuo manuia o le atuo sosia. Vātua na fa manuia nga i lau sunga. A wā faiva matiu te o lo fea ngai ai. E le nga tai tono le e kālesia. A fa pia fo i le vae ngo le spoto lo fa pia ona e tau tu ai. Te tono le mata nga lue nga wā onga ta alunga maanga nu. Fa tai lama. Te sae o tātou por kalame le nei tae au, o te wala awa tuai la o fionga le o fisilio. Pou lenga ni tanga luenga wa onga tanga longa maanga nu, la o fionga 
Afamasanga Dr. Caroline Afamasanga Fortai Molao Sam Nuanga. Next on our program will be the opening remarks from the CEO of the Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture, uh, Afyonga Doc, uh, Afamasanga Dr. Caroline Afamasanga Fortai. Lau Afyonga Afamasanga. Talo fatul mamalo le neta yao, o mua amel fafta ili tua ono ono na lofa ya itato pe ona saono ya itato ta itayo saoninga, fafta ilo sunga le epikopo, um ilo um tapenanga maya ya, o ma na yel fe au le neta yao, o ma o ma ifo se au, a se le matafa yo ili no walu isato no walu te fangoto, um walu sa failan saono anga, o la mena Filfilia Yesu le o fangota le filfilin fa ya onga fa in mon so le la o lota to fa ya onga tum ta to e e o tu ise male male fangota ona sa o le o fati nonga ai le na o le fu a fu a al fati nonga ma fa fati ta fa ese le 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 fa manatu ma ya ta to ya ta to tiu te ma ta to valau li a ai le ne la lo lang ya ta to yai ya ta una e fia fa a Pipi yama tu fo el sao noanga ale tai tai o le porcalam el nei aso i a po le fionga fo i ale AC o el nara a etu sai malan fa tai le sunga tai tai sao ninga tau na lo fa le tu ma ma fa manuia te le lo sunga a wau tofi ele ngata o le epikopo le kalesia a e fa pena fo o o o e fo o se tasi o pulenga fa moi moi na itono tato matanga luenga. I o fua lava i o nga luenga, fa tinonga malfa maoni male ato toa, i o faiva ese ese, ma o sfata ita inga leifo ile i a o tou whanau, le o tou tupuae, i o tou o langa la aiti le nei vaitau, a e ave o tou mtangata matua, a filifiliane po la tou inga tangata matua, le a ave ai oe pae matua. I a, ai o sa, a fafta i foe lo sunga nisha, Ma o lo su ma le nei tae au. Fa pe foin fa tae le su nga le su i a Japani o lo o tato fa tasi. Ma ta wina o lo fo lau mai le au ala. Le su i o isi a ma lo ma tato pa anga mai fafo. Pia fia foi la nga nga vava a i tuto a tu i leina le iluma. Lo a wai mai a i a tato su i in pulea o nga. I a fa pe foi tato su i o lo vava a i tuto a i a tato fa mau mau nga. I tuto no a tato ma lo. E o o vaa inga lai tuu mai tuu e o. I a fa ma lo lava fa ava noo to i tangi tāua. E mo le nei poa kalame. Fa fa tai foo i i sui o mtanga luenga o lo o fa pea na au ai mai. Fa pea fa la pu tonga tuu ma oti. I a ae mei se lava o tau fa nau. Fa fa tai o tau mua mua mai nei nei tai au te saa kwa tuu. O tau i nei fa ma lo lava o te loon tau fea lal faalwa vea o. Tau te o mai, mea le a whawhtai lawa nau nau, whawhtai wha maa losi. Whawhtai fo i sunga a li imta mai tai whaia ongi am pule a onga. O tau au wai mai, ia mal wha tangana fo i o tau e o mai, tau te au wai. Wa maa tau wina mwha maa wina api o wha maa maunga, lo tau au wai nei aso. Se lau tau sanga i luma, le a mata mata fo i tau wha nau, tau wha nau, tau wha nau. Le sa tau au wai mai wha le tau langa lea, ia man tuwa tau wal na mea. Fa ma lo le so i fua lau le, ma lo fua nga lue. Ae, e le, e tau o na o fa fitai i le vaenga o le nara. E se mal matanga o fie, o le te unga, o o wofo. Pati pati mai, i le mai a e a mal matanga o fie. Fa lau lo a i fua, i mai a e o fati nonga a le vaenga. Ma lo si o le matanga luenga. Ia lana o le filong i e tato o fa matanga le nita e au. Ha. Ya, fakta itu isu yang pulenga. Oi lo ala vale satu PC satu voice sama ima manono. Ya ala fakta yo lo tau awal mel nita ya fak malo tau fak mai. Ah malang long suah fak ya tato angad wenga. Ah ya lo suah tafah ese acknowledge your presence, Director General of UNESCO, 
Pacific State uh, Office in Apia, my good friend Nisha. Great to see you here, and you are a very important keynote speaker this morning. Uh, that we, we, uh, we appreciate very much. Excellencies and ambassadors from our diplomatic corps, we, we appreciate your, your, your gracing this occasion today, and we're always grateful, grateful for your donations and your sponsoring of our many activities. Uh, keep it coming. We also acknowledge the representatives from our government ministries and public entities, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and also the students. Acknowledge your presence, and, we, and it gives us great pleasure to see you here uh, to uh, commemorate this very important occasion. Now, at this very moment, uh, the ministry is in the process of finalizing uh, policies in archives. You know, the policy framework and also a uh, policy in, in record keeping, a policy in archives and also digitization. So it's very timely that we, we are, are, are celebrating the value and the significance of National Archives this week. We join our global community in commemorating this day. Now, you young people might think, what a waste of time. Why do we bother about uh, records and evidence? Well, just you wait until you are as old as we are, and then you are trying to find evidence for your court cases and also for your research in uh, history and uh, social studies. And whatever happened in schools 100 years ago or 50 years ago, you will appreciate the effort that is being done to maintain evidence. Because you don't know, I don't know what happened four generations ago. Ah, huh? when we were under colonial powers. Huh? Well, you, you just go read what is being displayed here and you will get an appreciation of what it was like, must have been like in those days. That is the value of archives. Ah, yeah. But I don't want to uh, say too much because that is the, uh, the value and uh, the reason why we have a keynote speaker. But uh, this year, the commemoration is emphasizing three different uh, ideas, main themes, and which Nisha is going to take you through and also provide. But it's mainly uh, inclusivity, meaning including everybody and including everything, and accountability, what you did before, you need to adjust uh, account forward and justify why you did what you did, and also to account for whether you had kept the records of what you were doing in the past. Ah, and also collaboration, because we can't get the evidences, the, the records together, if we don't get the collabor collaboration of people who are doing the same thing in different entities, public entities, and so forth. Now, again, before I sit down, I want to acknowledge this great support that we have gotten from our development partners, the UNESCO, JICA, uh, New Zealand, Australia, and especially uh, acknowledge the leadership and the governance uh, provided by uh, the Pacific Regional Branch of International Co Council on Archives, ICA, ICA, yeah, and also uh, PAPICA. Yeah, okay. Um, so it is very important to note what the theme of the displays are today. What's the theme of today's? Uh, the next three days effort. Why is that interesting now? Is it interesting, relevant now? <coughs> Why? Well, we'll leave that for your teachers to explore, investigate with you. But there is a particularly good reason for having this selection of exhibitions for your benefit. And you need to answer the question why. What is the relevance of all of these exhibits to today? and what we're doing today. Now, uh, we continue to acknowledge the assistance from our embassies around town uh, who have been very, um, and also our development partners, the UN uh, organizations in particular and their different branches for the support in the development of archives. This is very important in U for UNESCO and also uh, ICA. So it's all our collective effort to achieve uh, the good rec record keeping. But sometimes our records are so brittle, we need to digitize. And we're now in the era of uh, digitization. So, 
Aisa me a un ali ne yaso, ele ole tan ole nga oyo exipe, ole vai palasi me a un a, ya falia o onga, ete aluma o ete tala no ai malo ta ma malo tina, fa ilo ai, le asa esa ute fa ngota, o maua la wia, ele ose ava ava, a ole ume, pole mat, pole malauli, malauli, ok? Mau posa nai, I will have a lava. Ah, Yamania Lasso, Famania Yauto Uma. Thank you. After Tedel of Lofian Lofisilo Pulen, Mole San Noanga Matang of Fiel and Etayao. Our keynote speaker for today is Director of Office of the UNESCO Representative to the Pacific State. So I would like to call upon Nisha for your keynote address, if I have time. CEO Mask, Afamasanga, Dr. Karoline Afamasanga Potai. ACO for the National Archives and Records Authority. Fanuya Amela Silipa. ACO for Sport. Tafaisi Spencer Tawatu, representatives from different organizations, including our friend from JICA, officials from the Ministry of Education, Sport and Culture, and all our young friends who are assembled here. Good morning to all. Is it a good morning? Yes. Excellent. You can see what this height does. Everybody has to come and adjust the microphone. So what I'm going to do is move a little bit and speak from a distance so you can... No, 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 just a minute. See, improvisation. And it works. Can you see me? Yes. Thank you very much. I think um, a lot of what I was going to say has been captured by our CEO in her reminder to the young people present here. And it was said so well that it will be very hard for me to keep up. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is talk to you. Go a bit uh, historically. And I will begin where the SEO for sport used a phrase. Do you remember a very important phrase he used? If you want to be quick, Yes, you can run or climb the mountain. And if you want to? Excellent. So which one applies to Samoa? So if you put that statement in context of archives, and history. And you look at the Polynesian culture, Polynesian civilization, and you see the migratory patterns, and you see how far Polynesia came and spread. And this is in oral history. Some of it is being mapped. But what it also shows, that it is a communitarian endeavor. It is not an individual sailing competition, is it? No. So archives are very important in recording, whether it is through audio means, visual means, documentation, but recording and maintaining this memory. 
of transition, of change, of everyday happening. That gives lessons for the future. And for Samoa, I think it is very important, and all you young people who are exposed to a variety of communication these days, that this communitarian way of living, working, and sharing resources is what has kept Samoa together and has brought us, I'm becoming too native, I'm saying us, kept you together. And this is a lesson that should be remembered for the future as well. That if you have to grow, you have to develop, this collectivity needs to be seen as a strength. Now coming to uh, some of the other principles related to archives, maybe um, when you go through the tour, you will note how um, this day came into being, 9th of July. <coughs> it was all the way back in 1948, the day when the International Council of Archives was formed. And it was formed at an individual's <coughs> initiative. So communitarian way of working does not mean individuals cannot take action. But what individuals do is plant the seed. Somebody waters it. Somebody provides it the shade when it needs shade. Somebody else weeds out things that need to be weeded out. And collectively they nurture it. So it was an archivist, Mr. Buck. And the context was post Second World War. And there were a lot of fears about history getting lost political processes taking over the historical knowledge and distorting it. And they, together, all the archivists, made a decision to set up the International Council of Archives. It was set up under auspices of uh, UNESCO. And since then, it has led the archives movement across the world. So that is part of a history and it is important to remember that why it came about and what principles were identified in setting up the International Archives State. The CEO spoke to you about the theme of this year's International Archives Day, empowering archives and three subsets, inclusivity, accountability, and collaboration. Going a bit into the past, to the day, there were few principles, and I will uh, note them here for you. One is, of course, the <coughs> historical importance of documentation. Second is communication. Third is independence or the impartial nature of documentation. Fourth is democracy. Fifth is heritage. Sixth is memory. Seventh is accountability. And these <coughs> principles were discussed in 1948. Are they important today? Are they relevant to young people? So those people in 1948, <coughs> were they smarter than us? <laughs> they could foresee the future and they could see the relevance of certain principles as being 
foundational in nature or what we call universal and at the same time timeless that means they will remain relevant in all circumstances in all times so when we look at our world today and we look at the archives some of the examples which Ahma Sangha shared with all of you humorously, they're very serious in nature. Like when you are looking for evidence related to your land issues, if there is a land dispute, <laughs> or when the courts are looking for historical evidence. So those are very legal, practical uses. But what it also means that the archives or the laws governing the archives and records have a very deep moral responsibility of remaining that autonomous and free institutions who are documenting impartially being accountable to their time and for future generations. And some documentation, because the documentation has to happen in real time, it is possible it would be interpreted differently in the future. And it may include also documentation of both collective endeavor and individual endeavors. And it is for the future generations and it is for us today to look back, like Afma Sangha said, and take our lessons from it, take our evidence from it, and decide what is the future course of action we would take. It is not to dictate, but information, knowledge, and history, in my view, are sacred. They should not be tempered with, and they should always be treated with respect, even if it is information, knowledge or an action of the past that we do not agree with, that we do not like. Because if we try to temper with it, it will distort the reality for the future, for others. So that's one key point for all of us who try to see through our lenses to remember that the lenses that the archives use and the archivist use is one of neutrality. And living it for the world, for researchers, for those who need that information to determine how they want to use it and not coloring it. The second point that I would like to make is in relation to uh, memory. And memory, in case of Samoa, and also in case of uh, rest of the Pacific states, a lot of it is spread over the islands, but also across the colonial powers. If we are looking for information about 18th, 19th, more of 19th and 20th century, we find documentation of that information in, let's say, in archives in Australia, New Zealand, and other places. And this memory, though it stays with them, they cannot be more than custodian of that memory. 
because the memory is owned by people about who that archival material contains information. So this custodiality, good stewardship, is second principle. And it applies in the national context as well. Just before we started talking, we were talking, um, Amelia and we were talking about the private archives, personal archives. You know, and Samoa is a society where a lot of information and knowledge is in households, in families. So how do we bring that custodiality to work in the interest of the country, to promote information and knowledge sharing, to make that information available for the rest of the country and the rest of the world to share and learn from. And that is also an issue which is relevant in the current work of policy, <laughs> and rules development that is going on. That how do uh, everything that is there, all the resources, whether they are private resources, public resources, they are brought together in the national interest, in the interest of uh, good governance and accountability under a framework. So all of you, no matter where you are, you have access to it. And the next point that I would like to touch is related to the theme of the year, inclusivity and collaboration. Inclusivity, when it is talked about, it has two dimensions in the current context of the world that we live in. One is inclusion of people who find it physically or intellectually difficult to access information. So people with disabilities. But the second aspect is of marginalization. Communities who may not be literate or who may have gone through schooling but functional literacy is low and therefore cannot very um, proactively or very usefully access information. And second is communities who live on the fringes of a society, those who get left behind. These could be people who are homeless, <clears throat> could be people who are socially marginalized for whatever reasons, but all have a human right to access information. Because in current context, access to information is essential for survival. You need to know you have a right to free and compulsory education. You need to know that basic health care is available free. So this is very critical for everyday life. And archives, together with libraries, are seen as one of the pillars on which access to information can be enabled. So this inclusion in the development of libraries is very important, which it also means what the CEO mentioned as use of digital resources. So both online and offline preservation of information, memory, events is critical. So everybody could access it, whichever means they are able to use. It also means multilinguality. You know, from 2022 to 2032 will be the decade of indigenous languages. And it is very important to put that in the perspective of any developments in relation to access to information, whether it is libraries, education policies, archiving and record keeping policies. 
that not everybody would be fluent in an international language. So it's important to take into account the language of the country. And in your case, it would be Samoan. And collaboration, I think, I don't need to say much. We can see the collaboration at work. And especially if you look at just the ministry itself, it is fairly <coughs> intersectoral. Education, sport, culture. Within the education subset, you see how the uh, institutions like NARA and the National Library are integrated. So there is already a framework of collaboration established. But this collaboration probably now needs to be extended a bit more, looking at collaboration with private archives, looking at collaboration with private sector. And of course, the development partners have an important role to play. So thank you, Jaika, <laughs> for being here and for being present for the future as well. So uh, to our young friends, I would just like to say that you should not take libraries, archives, or education as dull things. Of course, when adults like us speak, it is very hard to fathom what it means in your current teen reality or teenage reality. But it does mean a lot. You will not have access to education if your parents didn't know that they could send you to the school free of cost. You, when you come across a health issue, you still need to go to the hospital. And when there is a tension and you want to see how it was resolved in the past, you still need to probably go back and look into the an archive or uh, a library, you know, to figure out how people of the previous generation dealt with it. So these issues may sound dull, they may sound non-relevant in your current time, but it is also your obligation and your responsibility to look into it and to ensure you are participating in it. You are taking leadership to take it forward. We hear a lot about young people given the leadership opportunities. Young people taking part in development initiatives. Young people playing a role in national development. Would any of it be possible if you do not take interest? Suppose your parents or your teacher or the SEOs present here and the CEO <coughs> present here instruct you you must take leadership opportunity. Would that make you a leader? Is that a yes or no? Yes? No. I disagree because your heart is not there. The road is cleared for you when they say so. And you can walk on that road. You can take that path. But if your heart is not there, if your interest is not there, you will not fa walk far. Leave alone walking with others, being patient, learning together, or running. So your interest in using the opportunities that come to you is key. And also creating opportunities for yourselves. In this week-long celebration that is beginning today. What do you want to do? You have seen an exhibit. When you go back, what are you going to do? How would you engage with the archives in the future? 
So some of these require your collective thinking, individual <coughs> thinking, and collaboration. And I will end here with very best wishes for the next two days of celebration, for this exhibition to be very successful, and with hope that all the young people present here will take increasing interest in knowledge because archives, libraries, are institutions, places of worship, of knowledge. And I hope you will bring your Samoan values of respect to respect and contribute to these institutions. Thank you very much for inviting me, for having UNESCO here. And the very best. Thank you. Next on our program, uh, I think we'll have a look at the uh, speech from the um, president of the International Council of Archives. When I think about empowering archives, I think about what are we doing to ensure that our archives are having the maximum impact on the communities, on the nations and the people that we serve. And when I think of that, I think, well, the material in the archives, the records that we hold in the archives, going reaching back over decades and centuries and millennia perhaps, hold the answers to the questions that are confronting humanity today. All over the world, people are asking the big questions asking questions about inequality, asking questions perhaps about climate change, about social justice, about individuals finding a voice. So what is it we are doing in our work, in our institutions, to empower our collections to come to life, to connect with people, to help them find the answers to the big questions that are in front of them? And secondly, to empower our what are we doing to empower ourselves as archivists, as professionals? What are we doing to make sure that we have the skills and the knowledge necessary to reach into our collection, to find the records of most relevance to today's society and the skills that we would need to connect with the general public and to make sure that we are delivering the maximum impact of those records by connecting that memory with people. We should also ask ourselves why. Why do we especially need to empower archives in 2021? And I think here again we have to turn to the year that we are just recovering from, 2020, the year of COVID-19, the global pandemic. And I think right now societies, countries, communities all over the world are trying to recover from the ravages and the disruption of COVID-19. In every corner of our, of our social lives, of our connections with our communities, we've been disrupted by personal tragedy of the awful loss as a consequence of that pandemic, but also of the economic dysfunction and the, the ravages through all of our social fabrics. There is a great period now of uncertainty. Governments need us to help us all recover our economies and our nation states to get back onto the footing to achieve some sort of normality in life. And I think at the social level, now is, is more important than ever for all of us to reconnect with our cultural identity, to reconnect with the memory of who we are that will give us strength to really redouble our efforts and contribute to the COVID recovery. 2021 is a particularly important year as we look ahead to do all we can within our community to empower our country. Let's 
1960, the Council will have the powers and duties of a parliamentary cabinet. At present, it meets under the chairmanship of the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mr. G. R. Pohl, CMG. Confirms the minutes, then. The next item on the agenda is to continue our consideration of the report of the visiting mission from the Trusteeship Council. We come to the section on agriculture. The most basic New Zealand aid to agriculture is the soil survey. The reason for our visit here, Chief... We have come all from New, way from New Zealand to see your soil and to see if we can understand all about the soil so that maybe there's something we can do to help you grow more food crops. Starting point for soil survey work is the aerial map. The men travel all over the islands. Frequent samples are bagged, recorded and sent down to New Zealand for chemical and physical analysis. Mutual courtesy, the New Zealand High Commissioner hoists the Samoan flag, while a leading Samoan, the Honourable Tupua Tamasese CBE, hoists the flag of New Zealand. Here the customs of two peoples are observed, with the two flags a symbol of partnership. In a few years the flag of Samoa will be alone at the peak, and Samoan young people are busy gaining the skills that will be needed to run the affairs of their own tropical islands. For them, beneath the wind in the palms, schools teach not only the ways of the great world, but also the ways of ancient Samoa, their own exclusive heritage. Oh, <laughs> 
know for the first time in the history of Samoa, the votes of the people will decide an issue which affects the life of every man, woman and child in the country. Independence for Western Samoa and the ending of United Nations trusteeship. For centuries, the chiefs and auditors have strengthened and sustained the pattern of Samoan life. Under the United Nations trusteeship system, as explained by the United Nations plebiscite commissioner, Dr. Rifai, every adult citizen has an equal right and an equal responsibility in deciding the political future of the territory. He tells of the plebiscite arrangements which are being made by New Zealand as the trustee power. From the traditional centre of Samoan government at Mulinu, returning officers with ballot boxes are beginning their journeys to polling stations throughout the territory. Every half hour on the day before the plebiscite, the New Zealand plebiscite administrator, Mr. C.G.R. Mackay, checks out another busload of staff and supplies bound for one of the 150 polling stations in town and country. From Apia, the capital, the Western Samoan Broadcasting Service gives advice and information on the plebiscite to the people. You, who will be voting on the 9th of May, should fully understand what you are voting for. Read the Constitution of Western Samoa. Copies may be obtained at the post office, library, prime minister's office, and from the administration offices at Mulinu'u and Tuasivi. Plebiscite day, and polling begins at the central office of the government of Western Samoa in Apia. A few miles away at the village of Lepea, the Prime Minister and his wife leave their home on the way to the polling station. In a foreword to a government booklet explaining the plebiscite, the 37-year-old Prime Minister, the Honourable Fiame Mata'afa, CBE, asked the people of Western Samoa to vote with a clean heart and mind and to make a momentous decision in the history of Western Samoa. There are two questions on the voting paper. One, do you agree with the constitution adopted by the Constitutional Convention on the 28th of October 1960? And two, do you agree that on the 1st of January 1962, Western Samoa should become an independent state on the basis of that constitution? For the first time in Samoa, women as well as men are voting on a national issue affecting the political future of their country. The United Nations Plebiscite Commissioner observes the voting at many polling stations east and west of Apia on Plebiscite Day. The votes are counted and registers bearing the names of 38,000 voters are checked and rechecked. And page 15 up. Number double two, double four. The final count, climax to months of patient work by Mr. Mackay and his Samoan and New Zealand colleagues, shows that a six to one majority voted in favour of independence. The result is reported to the Council of State, two of the highest chiefs in Samoa, and the New Zealand High Commissioner, Mr. J.B. Wright. When independence is attained, the Honourable Thomas Sessi and the Honourable Male Tor will become joint heads of state and the High Commissioner will withdraw from the Council. Now on Samoa's National Day, members of the Legislative Assembly and youth organisations meet on the historic Malai at Mulinu. In a simple but impressive ceremony, the flags of Samoa and New Zealand are raised side by side, symbolising the close partnership of the two nations.
Today, a new chapter in the history of the South Pacific has begun. The leaders of the Samoan people, New Zealand and the United Nations have worked in harmony to help Samoa along the road to independence in the modern world. With abundant goodwill from her Pacific neighbours and faith in her own unique heritage, Western Samoa can look forward with confidence to a new life as an independent nation under the stars of the Southern Cross. January the 1st, 1962, and with the new year comes the first independent Polynesian state of the 20th century, Western Samoa. His Highness Prince Tungi of Tonga arrives at Apia to take part in the celebrations and is greeted by the Prime Minister Mata'afa. On the Malaya Tirpao, the heads of state, their Highnesses Tupua Tamasesi and Maleatoa Tanumofili, walk to the official dais where the oath of office is to be taken before the Chief Justice of Samoa, Mr. C. Masak. Gentlemen, it is now my privilege to inform you that now you have subscribed the oath required by the Constitution, you are entitled to exercise your high and dignified functions as head of state. May I congratulate you on your accession to this high office and pray that Almighty God may at all times shower his grace upon you so that you may well and faithfully discharge those functions for the welfare of the state which is so happily born today. For many years, New Zealand as administering authority in cooperation with the United Nations has guided and assisted Western Samoa in its path towards independence. New Zealand's Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Keith Holyoke, speaks of his country's pledge to give continued assistance to the new state if it so desires. New Zealand, the former administering authority, is laying down its trap. The United Nations organization, which has played a formative role in bringing Western Samoa to independence, has completed its task. It is a time for rejoicing for Western Samoa and for all Western Samoa's friends and their leaders. Speaking for the first time as head of state, His Highness Tupua Tamasesi addresses the Samoans. His speech is interpreted for the visitors. In your hands, Samoa, lies the supreme authority uh, of your own gun. And uh, it will up to you, each and every one, and in particular the leaders, to uh, do your duty and do it well. For the last time, the two trusteeship flags are lowered, one by the Prime Minister of New Zealand and the other by the Honourable Mata'afa Fiame, Prime Minister of Western Samoa. Slowly and surely, in a moment of deep emotion, the heads of state raise the emblem of Western Samoa to the masthead, where, like the flag of many another new independent state, it demonstrates with dignity the fulfillment of a people's wish. <laughs> Amidst rejoicing and congratulations, the leaders of the new state approach the Phono House, where the visitors' galleries are packed for the reading of the speech from the throne by His Highness Maliatoa Tanumafili, prior to the declaration of the opening of the first parliament. Now, on behalf of the head of state, and with a full sense of the historic meaning of my act, 
I formally declare open the first session of the first parliament of the independent state of Western Samoa. So it for. The Prime Minister replies and moves the adjournment of the House. After the solemn state formalities, groups from schools and other organizations march past and pay respect. Celebrations progress in an atmosphere of spontaneous happiness. The people show their feelings in Polynesian music and rhythm. From the kingdom of Tonga comes a breathtaking gift of a thousand yards of tarpa cloth, made specially for the occasion. from different villages and outlying islands join the festivities in dances of local origin in celebrating Western Samoa's independence. Two or three dozen nurses complete their training each year. The hospital includes maternity services and a baby clinic. For such professions as nursing, a good general education is important, and increasing numbers of children are studying for the New Zealand school certificate. All right, Sandy, can you come up and do, do the uh, diagram on the board for the problem? What are you going to do first? I'm going to put the left ankle turned. Yeah. Yeah. Class, this is the passage we have studied on a modern hydroelectric plant. Now, how does it differ from most factories and other industrial establishments? Nirani? In a modern hydroelectric plant, very few men are employed, and almost all of them do work of a skilled type. Nalene, would you tell us the purpose of this experiment? This is one of the methods of purifying water for distillation, whereby the water in the flask evaporates and then condenses over here and collects in this beaker. 
And all the dissolved mineral matter remains in the flask. Very good, Tommy. <laughs> The opening of a new school is always cause for celebration, with neighbouring villagers again bringing the customary gift of a fine mat to their hosts. This time, the new school has been built by the village of Salalese, on whose malai pigs, barrels of meat and other foods pile up ready for the feast. The director of education opens the door. The people of Salalese want this known as Naila school, Naila being Samoan for the river Nile, implying that the school is to stimulate the minds of the young people, just as the Nile refreshes the fertile fields of Egypt. The school is open, the food is ready, and the songs and dances begin. truly inaugurated. Though schools tell of the great world outside Samoa, the island's own government is a subject of importance. This diagram shows how the uh, government of Western Samoa works. At meetings of the Executive Council, Samoan members have already had many years' experience of making important decisions. <laughs> Tala ilam 